Today I am going to show you how I used my super 19 freaking times in this 20 minute Grandmaster Nightfall. However, be careful because with great super usage comes great responsibility. I mean, you will be printing so many orbs of power that your teammates will absolutely love you. There is three weapons that make this build ridiculously strong and satisfying to use, and I'm going to go over them later on in this video. But let me tell you, this build isn't just about popping your super. This is an S tier endgame build that basically does it all. And most importantly, it doesn't rely on any artifact mods, meaning that you can save this loadout and use it every single season. In order to understand how this build works and why it is so strong in endgame content, we need to start off with the basics and that is our super Shadow Shot Deadfall, which tethers enemies in its radius. Tether meaning that they all share the damage that you deal, so if you shoot at one enemy, they all get damaged. This also means that if you headshot a tethered enemy with a solar weapon, it will actually proc the seasonal mod Flint Striker and give you Radiant. This super also 30% weakens as well as it suppresses basically making enemies completely useless. The duration of Shadow Shot Deadfall depends on how many targets you tether and keep tethering. It can last anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds, which is insane when you take into account how strong the crowd control on this super is and how quickly we get it back. Our super alone is very strong, however we can make it even better by including the exotic Orpheus rig, which by description it looks very simple, but it actually is a lot more complex than people think. Orpheus gives us ability energy for each tether target when we pop our Shadow Shot Deadfall. Keyword Ability Energy. This means it gives energy to all of our abilities. That includes our grenade, melee and dodge, not just our super. The super gain is unfortunately capped at 50%. The good news is that our other abilities are not capped and they get 10% energy per tethered enemy. This means that you can get them back multiple times if your super keeps tethering enemies, which is going to happen very often. So don't be afraid to spam your abilities because you will get them back with your super. Orpheus is only going to take care of the first 50% of our super energy. And the way we are going to fill up the rest is by using our grenade with ashes to assets right after we tether our enemies once our super reaches the 50% threshold. Also, we are choosing weapons that hit hard and hit multiple times. Because remember that tethered enemies share damage, so if a weapon hits a tethered enemy 3 times, it's also going to hit everyone else 3 times, giving us a ton of super energy. Wish Ender is the perfect example, and even after its nerfs with tether, or what Bungie likes to call them, fixes, it's still a very good and viable option simply because the bow itself is incredibly strong. Hierarchy of Needs is even better when it comes to super energy gain once you activate the Guiding Ring because it also hits multiple times and it hits very hard. The same goes for Polaris Lance which is currently my favorite pick this season because I mean, who doesn't like going Radiant and causing ignitions while playing Void Hunter? Not to mention that the weapon can deal with both barrier and unstoppable champions. Finally, we can't forget about mods such as weapon siphons, firepower and reaper because when combined with our fragment Echo of Harvest, we are going to be making more orbs of power than you will ever need. I mean sometimes you will even have 3 orbs of power drop from a single enemy. With the right teammates, you will all be chain spamming your super endlessly. Now, let's move on to the actual mods, aspects and fragments so you can see the entire build. In the artifact, you don't really need anything unless you're going to be using one of the solar weapons. In that case, make sure that you get Kindling Trigger, Flint Striker and Race of Precision. Wished into being and Argent Ordinance are also very nice to have. Stat-wise, make sure you prioritize Resilience, followed by Discipline, Recovery and Mobility. Don't worry too much about your stats because we are going to be using blue armor modes which each give you 3 tiers to the stat of your choosing. 
Ability-wise, we are using Gambler's Dodge with Snare Bomb and Vortex Grenade. For our aspects, we are gonna use Trapper's Ambush with Vanishing Step. Fragment-wise, we are using Echo of Salvation for the Devour, Echo of Harvest for the Orbs of Power, and Echo of Persistence to boost our buffs. Finally, I like to use Echo of Obscurity because it's very nice to have invisibility on Finisher, however, this last fragment you can switch out for anything that you want. For example, if you want to go full super energy gain, then you can go for Echo of Reprisal. If you want to create more explosions, then you can also go for Echo of Expulsion. Mod-wise, we are using Heavy Ammo Finder with Kinetic Siphon and Ashes to Assets. Now, if you're not using Wish Ender and instead you're using Hierarchy of Needs or Polaris Lance, then simply switch this out for a Solar Siphon instead. On our gauntlets, we are using Firepower with Font of Focus and Bolstering Detonation. On our chest plate, we are using triple resist mods that are going to keep you alive. On our leg armor, we are using double solar weapon surges with a single font of agility. Now, if you don't need the three extra tiers of mobility, then you can instead go for triple solar surges or triple kinetic surges, depending on what weapon you're using. Finally, on our cloak, we are using proximity ward with time dilation and reaper. The way you want to play this build is by knowing when to use your super and this will come with trial and error. The more you run a nightfall, the better you will get at managing your super. So don't be afraid to spam it non-stop, because the worst thing that you can do is not use your super enough. The basic combo is to throw down your super, wait for the enemies to get tethered so you hit that 50% super cap, and then follow up with your grenade, which will further give you super energy thanks to ashes to assets. If you are confident in your skill, then you can play more aggressively whenever you have Devour proc'd. It did get nerfed, but it's still pretty good and it still gives grenade energy per kill. Finally, when it comes to the weapons that I mentioned, I recommend you play around with them and see which one you like the most, because all three of them are top tier right now. And that is all that I have for you guys today. If you need any help in obtaining Wish Ender, or hierarchy of needs then find me on my stream or discord server and i will be more than happy to help hope you enjoyed this build and as always have a wonderful rest of your day